Hey everyone, it's coming up to 7.45 on a Tuesday evening and today's date is the 11th of December. Christmas is rapidly approaching. Yay, I think. <laughs> oh, I have to say I've really not been in the Christmas Eve spirit this year. I don't know why. I mean, I've not even put any trimmings on the ceiling or anything this year. I've just put the tree up and a few lights. I haven't even got the tree turned on at the minute. That's it. That's all I've done. That's all I've really been bothered to do. Well, I've got bad nostrils tonight. I think I might have to um, have a squirt of nasal spray. Right. Oh, I've been up to quite a lot as well. Uh, last Friday I had my diabetic checkup. That came back. Hmm. I don't know what that was, but I was tickling the back of the throat anyway. Yeah, that came back fine, more or less. There's a few things we couldn't do because. Over a week ago, I didn't go to my uh, appointment to give a blood sample. Only because... Um, before that appointment, four days before, I'd ran out of one of my diabetic meds. Thought a usual case, I thought there was more and there wasn't. So I'd ordered them, only to find that they had to review the prescription. The doctor has to review it every now and again which can take up to four days. So I went four days without the pills and I just thought that would have skewed the results of that blood test anyway because if the idea of the blood test is well basically make sure there's no abnormalities that's caused by diabetes and uh, to make sure that uh, your medication doesn't need adjusting and obviously it would have most likely looked like it needed adjusting as I wasn't on the pills <laughs> but uh, that doesn't matter because she took the bloods last Friday um, and they got sent off I'm just basically waiting on a phone call just to see um, what needs doing if anything but apart from that and a urine sample that I need to do at some point this week and drop off I've got to go and order some antidepressants because I'm out of those. I think I've got another tray somewhere in the lounge. I just can't find it at the minute, but I'll do all that at the same time. I can drop the repeat prescription slip in their box and uh, just go and drop the urine sample off as well. Uh, that's just to make sure kidneys and um, whatnot are functioning as it should. Because diabetes can affect those as well. I keep forgetting about that one. Actually, to be honest, until I went to my rear view, I'd actually forgotten just what diabetes can affect. If it all goes pear-shaped. But, so far, so good. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I suppose I should be thankful for that. And that could be a lot worse. I could uh, lose my eyesight or I could lose a foot due to diabetes or even a leg. If I actually... If I was given the option, I'd rather lose a limb, to be honest. I, I like my eyesight. <clears throat> anyway. I probably wouldn't be able to ride bicycles anymore, but as long as I can still move around, I really wouldn't care that much about losing a leg, to be honest. <clears throat> I know it probably sounds weird, but... Never mind. Um, got another torch here. Look, two the same. Well, actually, I say they're the same. They're two different brands, believe it or not. This one is an Ever Ready. That one is an Exide. I think Exide might have just bought the license to um, <laughs> make them, because I've seen quite a few Ever Ready lights or Ever Ready style of lights, various torches and things. Which actually have the Exide name on them. I've got another one under the bench there somewhere as well. It's the Exide version of the Ever Ready Motormate, which some people would probably remember from 
the 1970s. You know, one of these. The difference between this Exide one and the Ever Ready Motor Mate is actually the colour. This is a nice dark blue, the Motor Mate is a nice light blue. <clears throat> but other than the colour of the body, they're exactly the bloody same. I wonder why that is, because I've seen Ever Ready bike lights with the Exide name on as well. Because I always knew Exide as a brand of batteries years ago. I don't know if they actually still produce batteries, but we used to get a lot of like double A's and triple A's and C and D batteries with Exide written on them. I don't know if they still make those. I believe they still make car batteries and automotive batteries, but I'm not sure if they still make domestic batteries. Ooh. Right, I've got this that I want to get done for a friend's mum, that's her bike. I've just got to put a gear cable on it, which I don't have, and just adjust the brakes and tighten a few loose bits up and that is it. And as it's been sitting around, I'll pump some air into the tyres so it's good to go. But uh, the only thing that's not working on it at the minute is the rear gears because the cable is seized. It's seized into the black outer stuff. What we call the outer, you know, we call the actual cable the inner. And we call it this piece that the cable goes through the outer. And that's actually seized solid into that. I can't get it off. Because I was hoping, you know, I could get it off, clean all the cable up and put some new outer on and reuse that cable. But that ain't going to happen. I don't have a spare cable. Actually, as I'm sort of running out of time, I might pinch one off a bike I've got down at Mum's. Speaking of, I've actually got one up for sale. I got it a couple of weeks ago. A guy I know that do a lot of... Well, his main business is house clearance and whatnot, and business clearance, and uh, he picked one up and I got it off of him. It was either that or it would have ended up uh, going to scrap today, actually. So, uh, I rescued that. I fixed it all up. Didn't actually need a lot. I've actually been riding it around. Um, mainly because both of my favourite mountain bikes, my Claude Butler and my Silver Fox, are currently in the shed resting because the brakes need doing. Well, actually, I've got multiple front end problems on the glo on the Glord on the Claude Butler which is the bike that's in my banner picture on my YouTube channel um, and a brake pad decided to fall out of the front brake on my Silver Fox. I've no idea where it fell out from. I've got a rough idea because it was actually Friday. I'd ridden down to the doctor's surgery to my appointment perfectly fine I'd gone from there to Lidl to pick up some coke. Fine, brake was working because I do a lot of braking with the front brake. I'd gotten from there to an alleyway just across the way there next to um, the Catali Charity Shop and QD stores. It actually goes between them. It was working fine. But I get to the car park here at the end of the block and had no front brake. So logically it must have fallen off somewhere between the alleyway at QDs and Katali and this car park but since then I've ridden up and down there and walked up and down there no end, a number of times and I just can't find it, it's gone maybe the street cleaner has picked it up because uh, he goes out there and you know cleans the streets every day, every morning so uh, I've got a choice that I could either just when I next get paid or something, just order replacement brake pads for it. Or, because I want to do a brake overhaul on the Claude Butler, I could just get two kits, two full brake kits and redo both. Um, because the Claude Butler, the brakes are crap. They're three and a half years old. Well, I've used them for three and a half years myself. Um, but they were used when I got them, so I don't actually know how old they are, but even though they were used, because it was mum's neighbour at the time, where she was living at the time, that um, gave me the parts, or a lot of the parts to build this bike, because I, I built it not long after one of my bikes got stolen. 
um, I sort of built it as a replacement. And the mum's neighbour donated the frame, the Claude Butler frame. Uh, I think the forks that were in it. Not the ones I've got in it now. I changed them because they were white. If you look at the banner photo, they're white in that. Um, actually, that photo is quite an old photo because it's got the old set of lights on it as well. Um, what else did he give me? The brake calipers and the wheels. And I think that was pretty much it. I bought everything else. I put a new cassette on the back wheel. Um, I bought a new chain for it. I brought new brake shifters for it. Eight speed rapid fire, just like what this one's got here, actually. Uh, yeah, a number of new bits. All new cables, inner and outer. And uh, those forks I've put in it, they're wearing out. Because every time I hit the brake, the forks are actually going like that, so they're worn. Probably want a rebuild, but I'm not sure I can do it with those or can be bothered. Because um, not only do they wobble like that, they're far too soft. As soon as I sit on it and I start riding, the front just sinks. It doesn't hold my weight like I like them to. Um, I don't have any spares, so that's one issue. There's a little bit of play in the bearings and the front brake and the rear brake. Like I said, there's just so much wear, they're barely working now. In fact, the front brake likes to judder and sometimes lock up as well, so it's not really that safe to ride. So that's why I've got both of those off the road at the minute. So I was using that bike, I think I only paid about £5 for it. But then I decided to uh, get one of my classic ones out of the um, shed, one of my classic rally mountain bikes. I've got the 1991 Rally Mustang out at the minute to use as a replacement. Uh, so I'm going to sell the other one that I fixed up. Not for a great deal, it's not worth a great deal. If I took a can of spray paint and just tidied up the brake levers and whatnot, I could probably squeeze a bit more, but I really can't be bothered to do that at the minute. Oh. Uh, on top of that, I do actually have another mountain bike for a restoration project. Uh, a friend of mine who does a lot of gardening work bought it over for me. Um, it's another rally. But I don't know the model because someone's taken the stickers off. Um, a friend said <laughs> he was cutting a customer's hedge and uh, his hedge cutter found it. So I don't think he was very happy with that. Because I wouldn't be surprised if that damaged a couple of the teeth on the hedge cutter. But yes, it obviously been sitting there for quite some time because the chain had rusted solid. And my guess is, as the chain was already snapped, I'm guessing the chain broke and it just got stood in the hedge and basically forgot about it. You know, oh, I'll fix it later sort of thing. Maybe they went and bought another bike for 30 quid and used that instead and just left that one in the hedge and forgot about it. But uh, the seat post was totally seized in. But uh, thankfully it's a steel seat post and a steel frame. So with a bit of initiative and some brute force, me and my stepdad did get that out of there. I was a bit worried because I thought if I can't get that seat post out of there, the bike is scrap. Apart from rescuing what spares I could. Because to be honest, apart from that and the solid chain, the chain's beyond rescue. It really is. Every time I tried to bend it to move it out of the way, bits would snap off. So the chain was well past its use-by date. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was getting that way and that was the reason it snapped, actually. You know, getting old, rusty, not oiled and uh, just snapped. But everything else is actually in pretty good nick, considering wheels go round. Don't know about the tyres, they might be a bit too perished to use, but the tread is good at least. But like I said, without pumping them up, I can't see what the sidewalls are like. Uh, cables were all seized. I've actually taken all the cables off as well. 
because uh, I'll probably do the restoration on that springtime when the weather's better and a bit warmer because at this time of year it's too cold to spray paint really and it won't dry properly and take friggin forever to dry so yeah other than that I'm pretty bored Yep, I've definitely got sinus trouble because I've got a lot of mucus spill up right in the back of my sinuses. Oh. I think I might jump in a bath tonight. I want to make a video for the LEGO channel as well. For my BrickNut30 channel. That just sucks that I can't use the word LEGO in the title. Because it's trademarked. But, uh, oh well. <clears throat> I used to, it used to be called the Lego Nut, but uh, there was a thing quite a few years ago where apparently Lego was uh, clamping down on their name being used. So everybody, I, every Lego channel I followed that had the word Lego changed it. <laughs> so I just followed suit because I didn't want to take the risk. Alright, ow. That was sharp, I don't know what it was, but that was sharp. Laptops on regular. I have no idea where I'm going to do this Lego review either because I haven't got a lot of room on my computer desk. I've got a tree in the way. <sighs> News on the computer front as well. I'm just going to turn the kitchen light on. Thank you. Down here, I've got two empty Dell cases. One's an 1100, one's a 2400, and to be honest, you wouldn't know the difference looking at the cases, would you? Because they're exactly the same, that's why. There is no difference. The difference is in the motherboards. So, um, there isn't really a lot of difference. No. There's one header socket for the audio, front audio, which is exactly the same on this board. Just in slightly different positions. It's got this on both boards as well. Actually, yeah, there's a lot of things in different positions. I don't know if these are like revisions of the same board. Or if they are totally different boards. Actually, I'll probably just go as far as to say these are totally different motherboards. Because uh, there is a lot of things in different places, you know, this has got two of these, that's only got the one. Although, this socket is near enough in the same place. It's just a different way round. There's a little catch for the plug. My little catch for the plug is actually on this side. And this seems to have more capacitors in it. Or is it because this one's actually used smaller ones, so it just looks less? No, this has definitely got more capacitors in this area. I don't know. Anyway, I decided to take these two apart because I watched some room in the bedroom, for one. And I didn't sell them as they were because they just, they're not worth it. I've looked on eBay. I might be lucky to get ten pounds each for them and then I've got all the flipping rigmarole of packing them up and posting them and I just don't like that I've posted computers before and it is quite an arse I can understand why a lot of sellers don't like posting such things because it is a pain so I thought I'll just take them apart there'll be a few things I can keep for spares because I've got the 4600 that in the lounge such as the power supplies for example and a few other things but uh, a few caddies, this floppy disk caddy, I'll probably put that on eBay, and the hard drive caddies and things, uh, and whatever other spares I can think of. I might put these motherboards on as well, because there might be someone out there that wants to fix one, or build one. Who knows, but there just wasn't, there was only like a couple of I should think it was like one twenty four hundred and a couple of eleven hundreds on eBay when I last looked. That was about it. <laughs> so yeah, it just 
they're not worth it. And actually, the one that was being sold for a tenner actually had a £10 bid on it. Believe it or not, considering, you know, the 2400 does not have PCIe or anything on it. No SATA connectors. It's all IDE. DDR RAM, 1 gigabyte max. Pentium 4. I mean, I can't, I can't remember when these dimensions were around, but it would have been the early to mid 2000s. But someone had, on a 2400, <laughs> installed Windows 7 Professional. <laughs> that must have been slow. I don't even know why someone put the bid in. Perhaps they were just going to buy it for £10 just for the parts. I guess it would have been worth it just for that, you know, if you wanted the processor and the hard drive and the RAM. It would have been a cheap way to probably get all that. I'm hoping they put the maximum of a gig of RAM on it at least, but damn, that must have been slow. Maybe for shits and giggles I should get one of my old computers and see if I can install Windows 10 on it. <laughs> How low can you go sort of thing before it becomes absolutely unusable. So I've got all these bits on here. I need to go through them and, uh, you know, just pair everything up. I haven't got very many decent P4s left to spare, so I'm going to keep those. I say that because the pins keep getting bent on them. I need like some foam or something that I can store the processes in to prevent the pins from getting bent. But I never seem to come across anything like that. Unless I have, and that just hasn't crossed my mind at the time. See, I want to keep, again, for my 4600, spare switch unit. Because you never know when the switch is going to break on you. None of that would actually... Well, actually it would. I was going to say I could replace the switch. Well, I could if I really wanted to. Just put a new switch on the bracket, but... That would mean cutting into these wires and making a butchered joint. Unless there's a way to get the pins out of one of these plugs, but I'm pretty certain there is not. Not that I know of, anyway. I want to keep these. Um, they're the heat sink clips. I hold the heat sink in. Because I have actually broken these in the past, so I've got four of those. I'm going to keep those. I'm sure I've Got some more spare somewhere because I'm sure I kept them from the others. Because once upon a time I actually had quite a number of these Dell Dimensions. <clears throat> uh, oh, and I've got a DDR2 rig down there as well that I've built. That one was the one I swapped for my old motherboard. Because um, I built that for a friend. We traded all the parts for something I can't remember now. But we traded the parts and I put it all together for them. Then he wanted the DDR3 rig to match my sort of performance. Uh, so when I built mine, I traded him for my old motherboard and everything. Basically everything I didn't use for everything here that he didn't use. <laughs> and I just put it all back together. I added the Wi-Fi card. It did come with 8 gigabytes of RAM, but for some reason, what I thought was a 2 gig stick is actually a 1 gig stick, so it's actually got 6 gigs on there, but it will work with a 7, because I put the 1 gig in there and it didn't recognise it. It didn't like it. It said there was a RAM mismatch, but it did recognise all 7 gigs of RAM. But I like even numbers, so I'm going to find that 2 gig stick up and put in there. Uh, the only other downside with this, when I was playing around with it, the power supply failed. I had a nice gold one in there, but to be honest, I had never ever trusted it. And I've noticed that a lot of things I put it on, it ran slow, but I've put that 500 watt in there. The gold one was a 550, so there wasn't that much difference. Um, and that system is actually working a lot faster. I just need to put something on that side cover to stop it falling off because that is starting to get annoying. So those cases have got to go downstairs for scrap. I'm going to put the side panels on. There's another one. I don't know if you remember it. I had a Dell 9150. That's gone for scrap as well because unfortunately 
Motherboard needed repairs, motherboard didn't want to play ball. And I'm not paying nearly a hundred quid for a replacement motherboard. <clears throat> a couple of the capacitors had gone, because I was having trouble, it wouldn't, uh, um, wouldn't boot an operating system, and it wouldn't even get as far as the um, install when I tried to install Windows. Um, Try to install Windows 10 so it gets as far as the four blue squares, the, the Windows 10 logo, and that's as far as it would get. It would just sit there. And then I noticed that right beside the four pin 12 volt connectors, some of the capacitors had bloated and gone. So I was trying to replace them. One of the legs for the capacitor came off and got stuck in the motherboard. I just couldn't get it out. And in doing so, I was doing more damage and more damage to the motherboard. So I just gave up in the end. <coughs> I just, I'd have loved to have got it going because I really did like that case, but I think my chances would have been pretty slim on that one, unfortunately. But uh, as they say, you win some, you lose some, and unfortunately, I lost that battle. <laughs> oh, and the guy I got compute or I get these old computers and whatnot from at least once a year said he was clearing out, yeah, going to pick some stuff up from a comp the computer shop that he usually goes to. Um, did I want anything? So I was like, yes, please. And then he, <laughs> he said, well, I'll take some photos and you can tell me if anything is worth it. So a couple of hours later, I get a message from him with the photos and he said, there's nothing here worth it, really, is there? And I, I was looking through the photos and I was like, no. <laughs> it just wasn't. There's was two old printers and I don't like taking printers because you can't really sell them. There's no value in them. And I don't need them. I've got two as it is. Um, a big sack full of more power adapters and things. And I'm pretty certain I've got enough of those. I've got laptop power adapters in a drawer down here. I've got them in a bag in that outside closet I've got them in a big two or three big boxes out there um, full of them and I've got other boxes of power adapters and bags of adapters yeah basically I've got power adapters coming out of my ass I don't need any more I don't need any more cables that go with me either because I've got a big box full in that cupboard in the hallway here uh, there was a motherboard that looked like that it took a P4, it could have been a Dell motherboard actually. But uh, it took a P4 like the ones in this and DDR around. I had an AGP slot on it and I thought, I've got enough motherboards like that in my cupboard, I don't need any more of those either. And the only other thing he had was some laptop keyboards and a couple of desktop keyboards, and I don't need none of those either. So I'm just, I just went to scrap because I know he did a scrap run today, so it was just scrap. Scrap it, not needed. It'll go be recycled into something new. A bean can or a Coca-Cola can or something. <laughs> oh, my friend that dropped that old rally bike off, he also dropped me off some vintage Christmas lights. <laughs> They're down here somewhere. There's one set. Look at that. When was the last time anyone saw a set like that? Or like these two in this box? <laughs> yeah, those two take the old screw-in Lilliput bulbs and they actually are push-in bulbs. And they all work. Um, because, uh... He mostly does gardening work, but, uh... He also does the odd sort of house clearance here and there. He's clearing out a bungalow and he kept these for me and a, a step ladder for mum and my stepdad. It's one of them old steel step ladders that fold up into a, a taller single ladder. Oh, I forgot to put that battery on charge. Put the battery on charge for my um, nose trimmer. Because I've been feeling hair all around there tickling my nostrils and was driving me up the bleeding wall. I hate that. 
It's the only downside about this tash as well, it does tickle my nose. So I have to keep it trimmed. Could do with a shave again actually. Oh, is there anything else? Can't think of anything else to be honest. I'm just going to have a sit in the lounge. I do. Pardon me. I do want to get a bath tonight. Just feel like a nice hot soak in a bath. Um, there's not really been a lot going on with Facebook. That's been relatively quiet lately. Although, I did get accused of uh, sticking up for local thugs. Or hooligans. Although I wasn't. You know, I'd, I'd never stick up for anyone who's creating trouble like that. What it was... <clears throat> That there's been a couple of incidents of vandalism lately in town and people always jump on it jump on it being youngsters at fault or kids now I don't know if it's just my interpretation of what's or who's considered a kid is different to theirs but to me a kid is 16 and under I don't know why it's, that's just how it is in my head <clears throat> that's what I would consider a kid and then 16 is a very young adult 18 young adult that's just, that's how it works with my brain but uh, my point was simply that we shouldn't throw accusations uh, accusations around until we actually either have the evidence or we know for a fact who did it because it could have been anyone we don't know. It's probably likely that it was someone within the sort of 16 to 21 age group. But to me, we just shouldn't throw the accusations around until we know. <clears throat> but like I said, maybe my interpretation of a, of a kid is A, different to theirs. And I've forgotten what B was going to be. I mean, other than that, yeah, Facebook's been quiet. I've joined a Facebook group called Facebook... No. I was, out. I was right. <laughs> oh, I don't know where my head is tonight. Facebook Power Admins UK. Um, I just noticed last week, actually, that... I'd click the home button on my Facebook and gone to the home page, you know, where your, your feed is. And right at the top it had the invite for it. And apparently it's an actual official Facebook group by Facebook for admins in the UK who are admin groups, run your own groups and whatnot. So you can... It's a place that they created basically just to share ideas, ask questions, ask for advice and things from fellow admins around Facebook. So it's a pretty good site, pretty good discussions on there. Everyone's level-headed, which I like. So, yeah, actually, I'm enjoying it on there. You know, you get to give... Not necessarily your advice, what's the other word? Um, your two cents, I suppose, on something. So, things have been slow as hell. <laughs> nope, there's nothing going on there. I do need to get some photos taken because I have a bunch of shite I want to put on eBay. Like a bunch of those Dell spares, and I know what account I'm going to stick that on. I'll do that later, probably. Don't know if I'm going to be going down to Mum's tomorrow. I didn't today. I had a day at home. Um, I could have done some cleaning up today, but I didn't. I just went down and had a sort out outside. All right, and I'm going to end the video here. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and. Uh, I'll talk to you all again in the next video. Bye!